Welcome to today's video. We are on to day, oh, I only have five fingers right now, but we're on to day six of my current training program. It is an eight day rotation, so it's like three days on, one day off, but it's day six of training, which is leg day number two. We are at East Borda, which is a little bit different of a location I typically train at as far as Dixie or Crunch, but I'm up in Dayton right now and they don't have um, crunches around here. And obviously Dixie is a one single gym in Northern Kentucky. So we're at East Borda because I'm visiting Katie for um, a couple days. So we need to go in there and train. So there might be a few differences between what I do here and what I do at home, but I'll definitely mention those in the voiceover. The only thing I can think of is um, I'm still going to do some sort of squatting pattern, but if I have access to a hack squat or a side back leg press, I'm going to do that. And then also for a um, RDL, I think at this gym, they have like this machine that kind of like helps you load the RDL um, better, which I'll show you guys that. But yeah, without further ado, I actually need to go buy a membership too because when I go to Dayton or when I'm here in Dayton or when I go to Cleveland, they don't have crunches and that's kind of like my commercial gym, quote unquote. But if I buy eSport a membership, it's like $25 a month for all of their clubs in Ohio and a day pass is like 20 bucks. So it literally, I go twice and it makes up its money. I've been doing a lot of day passes for free, like creating new emails and stuff like that to get free day passes. But at this point, like I'm gonna be here for four days, I'm gonna be training for four days, and I might as well just get a month pass or whatever it's called. But let's go inside, buy that membership, and I'll see you guys at the voiceover of my sixth and final workout day. Also, we're sipping on our pre right here, Transparent Labs. Co Perez saves you 10%. We've been rocking with the bulk pre workout, 200 milligrams of caffeine, all the pump products. So, yeah, this guy right here with a little bit of ice, that's our pre workout. Tastes delicious too. And they had it. My absolute favorite leg press of all time will be a part of my home gym one day. And whenever I see it, I have to use it. They also do have a hack squat, which I don't think you can see. It's like two machines over, which I'll occasionally use maybe even on my first leg day. But when I have this and I probably will have access to this quite a bit, if I'm up in Dayton visiting Katie, I am using this every single leg day, no matter what. It just, the range of motion's amazing. It feels great. I feel like I can get really, really deep without having too much of a stretch. It allows my ankles to have the proper ankle flexion that they need. I am wearing squat shoes though, so that also helps with depth. But here we're going with two sets in the four to seven rep range. I believe I did, let's see, I think it's six plates aside, and I think I did maybe eight reps. I can't remember exactly. I can go ahead and um, you guys can count for me. I, I think it was in the eight rep range. But once again, this is something I don't have access to. So I do feel not uncomfortable, but I definitely need to get more comfortable with it. And hopefully over time, I can definitely work up to hopefully, I, didn't, I mean, I don't even know, maybe eight, nine plates aside, because obviously six felt heavy, but I do think as I get better technique and my body becomes more comfortable with the movement pattern, It'll just be a great overall leg builder and leg press for me. And the biggest thing here is the arcing pattern of the actual weight and the pad. So instead of going directly down like a typical leg press machine is, which in my opinion for me limits my range of motion, this kind of is a little bit of an arching pattern which allows me to get really, really high knee flexion as you can see right there, a great bend of the knees and really able to load up those quads very, very heavily, even maybe more so than a hack squat. So I absolutely love this machine. I do once again wear knee sleeves more so for comfort than anything else. Just a little um, sense of mind or peace of mind, I should say, that my knees are gonna be taken care of. And I am pulling myself so hard into the seat. I don't know if you can see, but my grip, like I could almost even wear wrist straps by how hard I'm pulling myself into the bottom of the seat, making sure that I am very, very, very stable in my upper body and let my legs do the work. As you guys can see, my head is getting a little bit red here because we are training with intensity, taking it pretty much all the way to almost failure, but I don't really want to fail on that machine just quite yet. Next, we'll go into the leg extension. Here, we're doing two sets of seven to 10, uh, or a rep range of seven to 10. The biggest thing here, once again, is making sure that your knee is right around that point of rotation. So I can see that big ball um, looking thing with um, basically where my legs attach to. It is um, basically the point of contact or the point of pivot. It right, is right at the end of the seat where my knees are. Big thing here, once again, I'm pulling myself into the seat. You can see my hands. I adjusted them right there because I was kind of losing my grip because I'm pulling myself extremely, extremely hard down into the seat to make sure that I'm not moving around too much. Set number two, this is where I do take it a little bit closer to failure. Like I mentioned with this higher intensity, lower volume training, my first set is 
I would say within one to two reps of failure. And that last set is pretty much almost always done to failure, if not with some length and partials, depending on the muscle group. Like I won't take my arms, like my biceps or triceps to lengthen partials, but I will do something like a leg curl, leg extension, or more of a, I would say, um, like a chest press as well. Something that's very secure, low risk of injury that can take close to failure. So there you see, pretty much reached failure, took a quick second to reset. And then basically right here, I'm just trying to get the last couple reps out, not really going all the way up because I just really can't. So that was a basically two failure and a little bit beyond it. Next, we'll go on to the seated leg curl. I do a leg curl and a leg extension on both of my leg days and I absolutely love them. This machine is a little funky. The fact that I don't have anything basically holding me down. So I'm squeezing really hard once again, pulling myself into the seat, really trying to anchor my upper body. I do not love this machine. I will say I would much rather have the machine at crunch where you actually have a pad on your quads because this is like the pad is like on the top of your shin and then on your Achilles. It just doesn't feel great. It's definitely better than the lying leg machine that they have but I will say it's definitely not my favorite by any means, but it gets the job done. Once again, making sure your knee is lined up with the point of rotation, really pulling myself. You can see the basically the veins in my hand are straining because of how hard I'm pulling myself back and down into the seat and really focusing on making sure we're curling that leg and making sure the hamstrings are doing the work. But as I mentioned, this isn't my favorite machine ever. It definitely gets the job done, but I would like the machine where you have the pad above your quads just for anchoring purposes. It does feel a bit better, but we go ahead, get the work done here, making sure that we're once again on the last set going past the point of failure. So I would say that last rep was failure. That's a partial. I think I do two more partials. There's one more partial. I think I try to squeeze out one more here. Yep, and then you can see I'm trying to squeeze all the way down. That is literally my body just not letting me go all the way down. Next, we'll go on to the RDL machine. So this is what I mentioned in the car, that this is a machine, I think they typically want you to do like squats and shrugs, but I personally find it amazing to do RDLs with, and it kind of pulls you into positioning. So you guys will see in the next clip, um, basically how much it actually kind of pulls you forward. But once again, the big thing here, I can load it up very heavy. I got my wrist wraps on and this is just a giant hip hinge movement and the machine is very, very stable. So I'm not worrying too much about the barbell or the tracking my barbell over the knees or anything like that. I can really just squeeze the glutes as I come up here, get a nice full stretch. And it's just a great full range of motion. I highly recommend trying this if you have this machine or once again, I've never done this before because not every gym has it. I will say most gyms that I go to don't, but when I see it, I have to use it. And this is a much better angle. Also say hello to that guy in the background. Uh, I don't mean to film with people in the background, but sometimes it happens. I try to be as courteous as I can of others, but here you can see the nice stretch of my hamstrings. Luckily I'm lean enough where you guys can still see the hamstrings at work. But once again, we're working on getting that body fat up. But as you can see, hips go back, weight goes down. As soon as my hips stop going back, the weight stops going down good full stretch. And like I said, the weight kind of pulls you, the weight wants to move forward, right? It's down, but also slightly forward. So that lets you really lean back really, really far. So this is, I will say, is much better for me in terms of a full stretch on my hamstrings than a barbell. Obviously, I'll still use a barbell. The barbell is great if that's all you have. But if you have this machine, I just think you can get a much better stretch and the counterweight kind of pulling you forward allows you to hip hinge even further back. And the last exercise of the day, we'll get into some RD, or not RDL, sorry, that was the last exercise. This is calf raises. In this case, we're doing seated. So one day a week, I'll do standing calf raises, and then the other day a week, I'll do seated calf raises. Once again, just hitting it in the shortened and lengthened position. And I noticed that for me personally, I'm able to load up the seated a little bit better in terms of just mind-muscle connection. I feel like when I do standing, it just isn't the best for me personally, but I do do both my program. As you can see here, once again, we are not bouncing. We are taking our time, getting a full stretch at the bottom, a slight pause, and then exploding up to a full squeeze at the top. Now we'll move on to another angle here, just from the back, but you can still see full stretch at the bottom, full contract at the top, and as I mentioned, still lean enough so you guys can see kind of what's going on in the actual calf muscle itself. But overall, a great leg day, once again, I'm not too worried if my exercises aren't exactly the same across all workouts. If I'm traveling, if I'm up in Dayton, in Ohio, in Cleveland, wherever I am, all movements are fairly similar in the sense of, okay, instead of a leg press on the Cybex, do a hack squat. It's still a squatting pattern. If I can't do that machine RDLs, okay, I'll do dumbbells or barbells. Like there's a lot of substitutions. I think a lot of times people 
kind of stress if they can't do the exact same movement pattern and the exact same movement. But as long as they're fairly similar, you're gonna have differences on machines. And once again, when you travel, don't stress it. You're if you're still training with high intensity, that's by far the most important thing. And then doing relatively similar exercises, but I'll pass it back to past Jack. And that is a wrap on the video as well as the mini series of my new training split. Once again, it's three days on one day off push, pull, legs, rest, and then chest, arms, back, delts, legs, rest. And each leg day is slightly different. As you guys saw in there, they have a Cybex leg press, and that thing is my favorite leg machine of all time. I think between that and the pendulum squat, I'm gonna get one of those for my home gym one day because I absolutely love those machines. When I have access to them, I'm using that 100%. Other than that, they also had like the cool little like RDL machine, which, like it feels good, but I did have to go a little bit lighter. I'm sure I talked about in the, that in the voiceover. But yeah, without further ado, I'll wrap things up here. Once again, I just realized I will have filmed all these videos, filmed the voiceovers before the first one actually goes out. So I do apologize if you guys do leave me some critiques and criticism on the voiceover. I deeply apologize if you did not enjoy it. If you didn't, let me know and I won't do any more. If you did, maybe I'll sprinkle those in on the channel moving forward. But yeah, honestly, I'm really excited to kind of get back to the creative content. Obviously, prep was very specific to bodybuilding, full days of eating, training. And I want to get back to some experimentation. Like I'm currently actually wearing uh, the Whoop right now. So I'm going to do a product review for, for the Whoop. I'm going to do a product review for the Aura Ring. If you guys have any other fitness products you want me to review, let me know. I'm going to do a week on the carnivore diet. There's just so much I want to do and fun videos coming. So definitely stay tuned for those. But I want to show you guys my program. Take it if you want. Make some adjustments for yourself. And that's probably what I'll be running for, I would say, at least the next eight months. Probably more than that. Um, but we'll kind of see how things go. Maybe make a few small adjustments here and there depending on where I am, what gyms, what I'm enjoying, all that kind of stuff. But without further ado, yeah. Uh, that's a wrap on the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Enjoy the growing season. Peace.